trust you all enjoyed the film as much as I did. And the burnout question I had, actually, so I'm going to start off with this one anyway. I did spend a bit of time with Robert on Saturday night. We had a few drinks and we got, and I got a bit squiffy anyway, Robert, I'm not sure to do. Um, but the burnout question I had when I was watching that film was, what character in that film is based on you? That was the question you fed me on Saturday night. <laughs> um, actually, none of the characters were based on me. Um, I didn't actually find out about the film um, until it was in post-production. Um, and because I was not living in London at the time the writer started the research process, um, people found it difficult to track me down. And so like many other members of LGSM, I'm not actually represented in the film at all. Well then obviously that makes suitably on the next question. <laughs> Which character would you like to have been based on you? <laughs> I think I have a fair idea, but I'll let you answer oh. it. Um, actually, when I first watched the film, um, I was thinking to myself, who the heck is Bromley? And I was thinking, my memory must be so bad because I don't remember any Bromley or even anyone who went through the journey of coming out um, while um, they were part of LGSM in the way that Bromley did. And I was kind of thinking, looking at him, thinking, well, you know, Bromley could be me. Because as I said earlier, I hadn't been out very long. Um, I was quite new to London. Um, I wasn't, I didn't have the political experience or the, at that stage the political nouns that Mark had and, and many other um, of the founding members of LGSM. So I was kind of thinking that I might, I, I could be Bromley. But in terms of the characters that are there, who would I like to be? Um, I guess, <laughs> I feel a great pressure to, I'm going to actually split my, split my vote. Clearly, um, I'd like to have been Mark. <laughs> um, he was such an adorable, lovable, warm, there aren't enough superlatives to actually describe him. Um, and he was a very special friend to me and to many other people. Um, the other person that um, I would like to have been would have been Di. Because I don't think without Di, um, things the course of history might have been a little bit different. Um, I haven't any, heard anybody else speaking about um, Dai's role um, in any kind of great way as, as, a, as, you know, as an individual. But, um, you know, the first meeting um, with Dai took place between myself, Mark and Mike. The three of us were sent um, to Paddington Station to meet him. And in that first meeting, we just clicked. Um, and Di was such a warm, such an open person that it made getting to know him um, and, and, and getting to the next stage of building a relationship, forging that solidarity, it made it so much easier. And so I think the people of South Wales, um, lesbians and gay men, uh, in Britain, oh, uh, die um, a lot. And I perhaps might not kind of want to be him, but I would love to him um, to have been my father. Because with a, with a father like Di, um, you can imagine he's got um, uh, two most amazing boys. Um, and and they're, they're great. Um, so yeah, Di and Mark are, for me, the but then that's unfair just to, in, to single out these individuals because we kind of, LGSM worked as a team. Um, and we, we kind of all clicked, um, and we bounced off each other in a special way. And the reforming of LGSM has just been just like that. I mean, we, the people that, some people have chosen not to get involved again, um, but of those that have, um, then we kind of just fell back into old patterns, like we'd never, we were kind of just old friends and never been parted. Um, and that's a, a tremendously um, 
your supportive environment to be in, and I think um, we're all we're all extremely lucky in that way. Thanks very much for that. Um, the, the microphone's open. If anybody has anything they would like to ask, yep. Are these characters amalgams of true people, or are they exactly as they were? I, I don't think they're exactly as they were. No film is able to, to do that. But the writer did spend a lot of time um, individually um, with people, um, and uh, you know, he, he did an, ex an extraordinary amount of research. And Mike Jackson, um, was the kind of the key figure in kind of hooking up Stephen Beresford with with um, you know with other people, um, and you know it has been said that um, by people watching the film that Stephen managed to capture Mike very well. I know that people have said to me, um, even in the short time that I've been in Port Rush, that they feel that. Um, the actor who plays Mark manages to to capture him very well as well, and that has to be partly due to the writing. Um, so Mark um, and Mike are, I would say, you know, have elements of, of the real people. Um, no character kind of seems to be a complete, you know, an amalgam, but some are more, some are clearly more fictive than others. Thanks very much. Uh, any, anybody else got anything they want to? No. Uh, really enjoyed the film. I really enjoyed your talk afterwards. Um, a little bit more than we were saying. I sort of felt that the film, to me, it brought me right back to 1984, and we, people here were raising funds for the miners in all kinds of ways. And I think uh, the miners sent um, uh, little miners lumps over to here to people who had, who had raised funds here. I think people will remember that. Um, and I felt the film, it, it kind of, yes, it was an absolute story about a particular group of lesbian gay, my, gay support the miners, and um, this particular group of miners, but it also gave a, a real vision of that time. And it, you know, there were some places where they didn't get the response, or the, the community didn't get the response that they had hoped for from the miners. So that element was in the film. So in a sense, although it told the specific story, I felt that it also told the broad story of right across there. But I was very interested in the march at the end because I had remembered that. I thought that was an amazing scene and very, very well represented. And they didn't have really real footage for that though, any of the original footage for it. They had to reconstruct that whole, the, Gay Pride March. Um, I would agree that um, the film does kind of capture the time extremely well. And again, I think that's um, a tribute to the filmmakers because they did their research. Um, we, as a group, made a video um, which was made as a present or a, a thank you to the people of Delice Valley. It's called All Out Dancing in Delice. And it's available on YouTube if anybody wants to rush over and watch it. I think once you've seen that, you can see um, how, how in, some, in, in some instances, it, it, it almost filters into the film. But you know, one is a documentary, one is a piece of fiction, so the two do stand apart. But no, the, um, there, is no there is no documentary footage of crossing, I think it's Westminster Bridge. Um, and that did have to be all recreated, uh, right down to the banners. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean they did they did their best, um, or they tried or they tried very hard to 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 make it appear as much as close to how it appeared in the times as possible. Okay, thanks for that. Anything else? I was sort of kind of wondering also about the. The actual picket lines, and I know you did you mention that you weren't involved in the picket lines at all, you didn't get to that. Now you're testing my uh, <laughs> memory. Um, 
I can't, did I, did I ever go and stand on the picket line? I don't think I ever did go on the picket line, but the one, the most scary moment for me during the strike was actually on a demonstration in Whitehall where we were kettled by the police and we were charged by police horses. That was the first time that uh, I had ever experienced uh, anything like that and it was so scary. Um, the second time that that happened to us is when we tried, we also had a, a group called Lesbians and Gays support the print workers um, which defended Wapping or tried to defend Wapping and again um, that was the second time that um, I was charged by a police horse and had to dive under a, a hedge to, to try and save my, save my skin. But um, I think there are interesting comparisons between um, lesbians and gays support of minors and, and, lesbi uh, and lesbians and gays support of print workers. I mean, you know, the lesbians and gays support of minors worked because a lot of that work between pit and community, um, those links had been done by my mining unions and, and themselves. So it was quite easy for us to start using, you know, trying to link, to build links. We, we tried to forge a common experience of oppression. Oppression through, from the police, from the tabloid press, and from other elements of the state. Um, Principally, the benefit system used against the miners to try and break the strike um, and, and the law. So, you know, <clears throat> but that idea of PIT being linked to community and then for us to be able to say community linked to community, these were very easy um, kind of ideological arguments to, to make and, and, and convince people of the benefit. And, th and those weren't around, they, those weren't the same for lesbian and gays um, support the print workers because print workers didn't live in communities, they weren't tied to pits in the same way. So there's clear differences that I think teach us that there is no blueprint for progressive change. I think the, each moment um, has to, does it needs um, its, its own solution. And this is you know, where people like Mark come into their own because they have that vision they, and, they, and they can make those connections. Um, and I would, again, I would say, listen to Dancing, uh, go and watch Dan All Out Dancing the Lies and you'll hear Mark make these very arguments um, in his own words um, and you'll see how close the film almost lifts one of his speeches. They certainly lift quite a few words. They don't lift it all, but they lift quite a few. Um, and, uh, you know, it's inspir they, his contributions to that documentary are inspirational. Well, tell me, did Elton John ever ring his? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I was going to be to see Brodsky being live. Not that I'm a big Brodsky, but not fan. Life's too short to deny it. I mean, uh, bands like Brodsky Week, the summer sewer. It wasn't a great night that, that night. Were you at that night? I was at that night, yes. And um, it, was, um, a, it, it was a fantastic night. I mean, it kind of, it kind of epitomized and, and just captured uh, the whole spirit of, you know, the whole sense of jubilation and, and fun that being an LGSM um, kind of brought into people's, into people's lives and gave us a moment to celebrate. Even though when things were hard, um, there was always laughter um, and there were always moments um, like the, the Pits and Perverts Ball to, to treasure and remember. And I think just what you're saying there about things being hard, that's what brings people together, people when they're really hard. You, you watch the film, the last thing I kind of think of, if anybody else wants to shout, please do. Um, if there's anything in the film you'd like to change, would there be anything you would like to change? Or would there be anything you'd like to include? Ooh. Um, whew, that is a, a very tough question. Um, things I'd like to change. Well, <clears throat> I think, I don't know how I would feel if I was actually a member of, um, well, Do Lies Valley. I know that they, they're, 
I know that after the film, Di went up to the filmmaker and shook his hand and, and, said, and says thank you. And, I, and most people feel because the film, does, although it doesn't get every instance right, it gets the big, the big ideas right, and it gets the feeling right, it can, and, it, and it gets the emotion right. And, and because of that, I think we can, we can forget, we possibly, it's easier to forgive the, the moments that are invented purely for the purposes of dramatic action. And one, I think one of the more pro problematic elements that's, that is invented is the character of Mori and you know, the actions of her sons um, and, and the violence um, that they display and the aggression because we, we, re we experienced none of that. What actually happened was on that first trip, the 27 of us went down <coughs> And we got lost, <laughs> driving around the Welsh Valley in the pitch black, not knowing where heck we were. <laughs> and then, and then we kind of like stumbled across this this tiny place called Ongloy. Um And we got there at one o'clock in the morning. So we all ended up in Dai and Margaret's house on the floor together until the following morning. And then we got put out to our respective families. And that evening. Um, we got taken to the Miners Welfare Club and we walked in and we walked in in single file and you know a few of us got, got so far in and then there was complete silence and then suddenly the whole place just erupted in applause and you know from that moment onward then any apprehension that we had about our stay and kind of just dispelled. And again, from that moment, friendships just formed so quickly. The warmth of the welcome was, was tremendous. Um, you know, you, you can't, who would have thought? I mean, it, is, it, is, it, it, it's, it's, it wasn't conceivable at the time that we could have been welcomed so, so warmly. And I think, you know, and I think it kind of also kind of maybe perhaps um, is a little bit of a a critical um, reflection on ourselves, in that we kind of tended to homogenise um, mining communities, um, homogenise miners, and and by kind of constructing them as socially conservative, where in the fact they were they were, they were far from that. Certainly in the Delice Valley, the mining. Community and 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 the mining union was was outward looking. They they had a tradition of 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 extending friendship um, and extending solidarity. Um, they, as I say, they they were forward thinking and that they knew that they needed to build links way way beyond the confines of the pit, beyond the confines of of Wales. And they had people like Di up in London. Um, generating support and building relationships. Um, and you know, they couldn't have chosen, as I said earlier, a better ambassador for their community, and in, my, in my opinion, certainly. Um, and so, you know, at, that is one, one element of the film that if, perhaps if I was kind of a minor or came from a, a minor community, I might feel a little bit more ambivalent about than I do, um, because as I say, although you know, it's quite easy to, to, to feel, to look on the positive side of that because we didn't, we weren't the perpetrators, we were never shown to be the perpetrators of the violence or the aggression or the homophobia. But if you see those representations of, of members of your own community that aren't true, then perhaps it's a little bit harder to take. Thanks very much. That is, does anyone else have anything you want to ask? No? Come on, come on. Come on. Turn Oh, switch it on. Sorry. Oh. Uh, you were saying about um, campaigning, the campaigning started again. I was just wondering how you find in the whole you know, campaigning world, how it's developed and changed. And is it easy to make a, a difference these days? 
as it was back in, or, or more different, is it easier or more difficult than it was back in 1985? Um, we haven't been doing a lot of campaigning as such yet. Um, most of the work that we've been doing has been just reacting to the publicity that the film has generated. Um, and responding to, to people's questions for, for speakers um, and, and uh, as I say, selling merchandise and being able to raise money that way and then put that to uh, good causes. But we've not actually done any political campaigning, but it's certainly something that we um, have, are thinking about. It, you know, it's, 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 um, it's something that we feel that we need to address. Uh, we will, we, as I say, we, we are going to support um, the demonstration on Saturday at uh, Kellingley Colliery, which is in uh, Nottingley in Yorkshire. Um, and we have been um, you know, demonstrating along with lesbian and gay uh, trade unions in Turkey. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I don't feel able to answer whether it, it, it's harder or, or, or easier then. I, I'd say it's different. Um, and I think we, you know, we have to find new, new solutions. We have, we have to try and you know, break the, or, or the campaigns that we think that we have to, to get involved in um, are you know, fighting the austerity cuts um, fighting um, the attacks on our environment um, and so we, you know, we, we'll be looking at that in, in due course. I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, yeah. I mean, I would encourage everybody to get involved in whatever, whatever issue you feel most passionately about, um, then try and, try and get involved and, and, do, and do what you can, because it, as you say, it's, um, if we sit back and, and kind of expect others to do it for us and, and to give up, um, or to relinquish responsibility for our own lives, then you know that that just plays into the hands of the people who are imposing these cuts and and, and you know implementing these uh, unfair laws and uh, and then creating the uh, you know deepening the inequality that exists in the society. So are you still at um, apart from LGSM, um, I'm the last big campaign I was involved in. Guess you should get no prizes for guessing from my action with the Scottish Independence campaign. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I was on, I was a member of the Yes campaign, um, and um, it was the second major blow. Um, <laughs> in my political career after, after the minors, I was just thinking, when, when, ever, <laughs> will I be on the winning side? You're on the winning side! <laughs> um, so, yeah, and that's, that's what I just finished doing, and then I was from there um, into picking up with LGSM, um, and um, as I say, the 
the next struggle, well, the, the broader struggle from here on is certainly to try and counter, um, I'm going to have to use a horrible piece of political jargon here, I do apologise, um, kind of neoliberal neo hegemony, or hegemony, I think it's. Um, so, and, and, and that is all, you know, just all those, all those things, the, the austerity cuts, the, the widening inequality, the tax on the environment, you know, unfair laws. Um, so, all of those have got, we, we've, we've got to start um, trying to convince people that um, the world does not have to be like this. And, you know, and because that's what we get told. And I, well, that's some, one of the messages that I'm hearing through the TV constantly, and from especially from conservative politicians, is that we don't have any alternative. Well, I think um, Greece is about perhaps about to show us that we do have an alternative. Um, it is, I think, it is uncertain how the Greek situation will play out. Um, but I think there are certainly signs for hope for showing that. Um, the powers that be, um, the you know, um, the EU, um, you know, the financing of debt, all of these, uh, uh, and the austerity cuts that have been imposed in Greece, that there are ways um, to say no and, and to start um, thinking about our own more progressive solutions. Yeah, so if anything else, then it just remains for me to take your hands your own. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, Robert, he's going to be here, because I know all of them, I think, um, he's going to be here for a while. If you want to call over and speak to him and ask him something, he's more than happy. Uh, well, thank you very much for your participation, folks. Thanks.